What happens when the landing gear refuses to come down? Well, that situation happened recently just outside LaGuardia Airport with a regional jet that lowered the gear and didn't get three down and locked. LaGuardia is one of the most challenging airports in the world. Let's follow what happens to this crew. Abrick uh, 5755, we're on tower with you. Uh, we might need to discontinue this approach. Stand by. Yeah, they might. And Brickyard, 5755, uh, we have a landing gear issue. We're going to need to discontinue the approach. Okay, they have a landing gear issue. Now, they don't tell us exactly what it is, but this used to be called three down and locked, and, uh, and or three greens was another way to express it. And what is three greens? Well, there used to be three little green lights inside the cockpit, and when all three lights would uh, light up, the nose gear and both landing gear, you knew your, your gear was down and locked. These guys have some sort of indication, probably on their screen, that all three gear are not safely down. Now they have to stop what they're doing. They have to stop the approach and they're gonna go find some place where they can climb up, maybe go into holding and work through the issue. I'll talk to you in a minute about what their options are. Let's see what they do next. Break your 5755, LaGuardia Tower, Roger. Uh, stay request, which one to continue the approach? Uh, we're going to continue on the course and uh, cross above the airport, then request vectors, and we'll need to climb. Yeah, so basically they're trying to go through the checklist and figure out what's, what's happening next. Uh, can we just uh, level off here for Brickyard 5755 and follow the approach course in? And Brickyard 5755 from your current position, fly heading 040. 040, Brickyard 5755. So he requested, the pilot requested to fly their, their current course like back over the airport and then figure it out by then. ATC now is gonna to wanna to get them out of the way. And so there's kind of conflicting priorities here. So the air traffic controller is gonna give him a heading of 040. He's gonna send him up north, uh, basically out of the traffic flow for this airport so that they can have time to, to figure out their stuff. But where, what they wanna do now, they're probably down at about a thousand feet. They need to get some altitude to go take care of their problem. And uh, once you're on the zero four zero, I just want to go back to approach to assess it more, or, or yeah, request. yeah, we're going to need to assess it, and we're going to need to climb. Okay, so they need some time to figure out their problem. All right, fifty-seven fifty-five. Um, we're going to climb to two thousand, and uh, we can go to back to approach whenever. And Brickyard 5755, Roger, climb, maintain, turn the left heading, correction, right turn heading, 050, climb, maintain, 3000. Right, 050, climb, 3000, Brickyard 5755. So you can hear the kind of distraction in the pilot's voice. This is most likely the co-pilot, uh, the captain's probably flying the airplane. Uh, they're staring at the gear, they're trying to fly the airplane. Uh, this is why uh, it's called the startle effect. And when you get some sort of anything that goes wrong. It's not an emergency just yet, but the landing gear didn't come down. That's a pretty serious issue if it doesn't get resolved. Uh, the first thing that the pilot in command does or the pilot at the controls does is he says, or she says, my aircraft. That breaks the startle effect so that somebody, both pilots, in fact, know who's actually flying the airplane and somebody is flying the airplane. So now they're going to fly up 050. They're going to climb up to 3,000 feet. They're pulling out checklists because there are checklists to deal with all this stuff while they're handling the radios. And the captain's thinking about what am I going to say to the passengers because we were two minutes away from landing and now we're heading back up north. So there's lots of stuff going on in the cockpit in addition to the fact that you might have a serious problem here on your hands. And for Brickyard 5755, we do have the gear, gear down and indicating locked. Um, we'd like to go back to LaGuardia for the approach. So they got this vector up north, and it took them a little while to get up there, a few minutes. And in that few minutes, they were able to get their landing gear problem resolved. Now, here are the several possible scenarios for how they got it resolved. Uh, on some of the smaller jets like this, there's actually a place in the floor behind the pilots that you can put a, a crank, it, you actually carry it around in the airplane with you, and you can crank the gear down manually. And most likely that's what they did. If they followed their checklist, you gotta flip the flap on the floor and you gotta put the thing in and the co-pilot has to get out and crank the gear all the way down. But once it gets all the way down, you'll get a three down and locked indication and everything's fine. Here's the normal sequence for the gear coming down. The gear doors open up first, the gear comes down, usually hydraulically, some airplanes electrically. It gets all the way down and locked. In other words, the locking arm locks stiffly so it's in place. 
then the gear, gear doors come back up to make the airplane more streamlined. When you manually crank down the gear, you're gonna get the gear down, but you're not gonna get those gear doors back up. So it creates even more drag than those big old you know, landing gear hanging out there. So these guys now have a, another thing that they're gonna consider because they're way away from the airport and they've land, they lower the landing gear away early. So uh, see what this turns into here in a minute. Roger that. So you do not want to declare, you just want to go back into the sequence for now? Yeah, we'll go back to the sequence, not declaring an emergency at this time. Okay, why don't they want to declare an emergency? Well, because the landing gear is down and locked. So it's really kind of a routine landing at this point. And they don't want all the hoopla that goes with it. You know, if you declare an emergency and you touch down the runway, all the fire trucks come out and they chase you all the way to the gate. No necessary. It's not necessary at this point. The landing gear is fine. The airplane is going to fly just fine. But that's all going to change in a minute. Aircraft 755, understand. Maintain uh, 250 knots, 360 heading, vectors, uh, sequence sector. Unable 250 knots, we can give you about uh, 220 for the max for Big Bear 5755. Okay. Yeah, I should say that before. Yeah, just uh, whatever you can. Uh, let's just make it even uh, 210 knots. 210 knots for Brickyard, 5755. Okay, what was that little exchange back and forth just now? Because the controller wanted them at 250 knots, and they came back right away and said, no, no, we can't go over 220. Why is that? Most likely those gear doors are open, and there is a restriction, and it's probably right on the checklist, don't exceed 220 knots, or you might damage or blow off those doors. So they're restricted on airspeed due to their configuration right now, they're burning a lot of extra gas. It's going to take the captain a minute or two to kind of work through this, but you don't want to create a secondary emergency if you've already solved one and you might get low on fuel. See what he says here in a minute. Approach break down, 57, 55. Good. Yeah, with the gear out here, we're just burning a lot of fuel and... Uh, for our numbers here we're going to yeah. go ahead and declare that emergency just to make it official here okay so here's what happens they took them on this big vector up north because they're sequencing them back in a non-emergency airplane there's lots of other airplanes coming into LaGuardia they got to get these guys up and out and back down but that whole time they got their landing gear down and they're just you know the, basically the, the power levers are full forward to fly with that landing gear down the whole time and those big old gear doors out there flapping around. So at some point now, a few minutes later, he says, hey, you know what, we're burning way too much gas. Before I make matters worse, let's just declare an emergency. What does an emergency do for you? It gets you priority handling into the airport. In other words, no more delays. Don't put me behind five other airplanes. Don't put me into holding. I want to be the first guy headed right towards the airport. Very smart move on the part of this crew. Um, so we are declaring an emergency for that and request priority to LaGuardia. Priority to LaGuardia. Roger that. Uh, Brickyard 5755. Everybody's pretty calm. Brickyard 5755, souls on board and fuel remaining in time. Souls on board, 67. Fuel on board, one hour, 30 minutes for Brickyard 5755. Thank so you. if you're a fan of this channel, you've seen several emergencies like this, and you know what the routine is at this point. They're going to ask for souls on board. They're going to ask for the fuel state. How much fuel do you have on board? And the third one was, what are your intentions? The reason he doesn't ask this time is because he already knows what his intentions are. They've got the landing gear down, and they're going to come back to LaGuardia and land. So he's already had an answer to that. He gets the other two answered, and off they go. So they spent a little more, more time flying around out here, again, burning up a bunch of gas. This was a good call on the part of the captain. They take them way out and back around, but that's, again, what they have to do to sequence them in for a safe Break landing. 5755, reduce speed to 160, contact LaGuardia Tower, 187, good day. 160 knots, over to Tower, 187, thanks for your help, Break 5755. So they switch LaGuardia over to Tower. Tower. Brickyard 5755, RNAV X-ray 31. Brickyard 5755, LaGuardia Tower, runway 31, with 340 clear to land. 31, clear to land, Brickyard 5755. So they basically end up now at this point in our scenario where they started in the beginning. This is the, the point where they would normally reach down to lower the landing gear when they got that first kind of indication that the gear wasn't going to come down. This crew handles this really, really well. 
Uh, did they need to declare an emergency once they got the gear down? No, not really. But then there, a secondary problem was creating itself, and that was the burning of extra fuel, a lot of extra fuel. And they don't know how long it's going to take them to get sequenced back around and back to the airport. And it did take quite a bit of time. And so they don't want to run out of gas and not have any options to go anyplace else. Because remember, if they have to go maybe over to JFK or some other airport for some other reason, they've got the landing gear down the entire way that they've got to go there. So a good pilot is going to be thinking out ahead. They're going to think about the danger that lay ahead and they're going to do something to avoid it. That's wisdom. Uh, on the part of this crew. So great job on their part. Uh, one emergency didn't create another, but it got pretty darn close <laughs> on this one. Heads up crew uh, averted all of that potential disaster. They land uh, with uh, an uneventful landing at LaGuardia. And, uh, and it's a good day for everybody as they taxi to the gate and everybody gets there just delayed a few minutes. Well, this one turned out pretty good in the long run. Now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.